Hello interwebs, welcome to my kitchen. It's time to fix an empty plate with dinner. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys the exquisite cooking of me and my spaghetti bolognese, which actually isn't spaghetti bolognese, it's bolognese with... Um, fusilli pasta. Um, because I don't like spaghetti, I think fusilli is better. Fusilli? Fusilli? We're making this. Let's go everyone. I've got one shot at this, so uh, let's get started. So, on the cooker I've got some Tesco steak mince. This is 5% fat. It's Irish lean beef to be exact. I like to go for the low fat mince because I find there's less oil and grease in it, which I think makes everything nicer. Um, I've got a red pepper. Uh, I could have gone with any other colour pepper for a better colouring. Uh, reds are the sweetest. I like red pepper. I could sit and eat bell peppers. Uh, I'm all about them. And I've got Tesco brand chunky veg pasta sauce. Um, you can go for a branded option like Dolmio or something like that. Um, however, these are really cheap and personally I think they taste great. And again, the Dolmio and branded sauces, I find that they're a bit oily myself. But that's just my preference. I find basic, simple and cheap is the way forward. And then we've got this uh, fusilli pasta here, uh, which I always have in large bags because it's good to have on hand. And I think that's about all we're going to need. So I'm going to start out by getting the kettle on the go because we're going to need to cook up this uh, pasta. So I'm going to put a decent amount in there. We don't have to max the kettle, but you want it like two thirds full or something like that. Let's get that boiling. Uh, I use a water filter because I, uh, south of England is basically all hard water and you'll get a crap ton of lime scale and stuff in your kettle if you don't use a filter. These are very effective, I highly recommend them. Uh, right, hopefully that's not going to be too noisy as it boils in the background. I'm also going to preemptively get a saucepan out. Uh, let me see, big or middle? Um, let's try the medium first. I'm going to preemptively turn on the stove because uh, if, like me, you live in a flat that was built by the lowest bidder, you probably have these ceramic hobs that take approximately 10,000 days to heat up. If you've got gas, then obviously you turn it on and it's immediately hot. These take literally five or ten minutes to get going. So that's on the go. I'm going to measure out my pasta now. So um, ah, I don't have any scales, so I measure everything by mugs. And uh, uh, I find this is a very useful measurement because everyone's got a mug and most mugs are about the same size. So these mugs, they're about 300 mil or so. That's probably about uh, 10 or 11 fluid ounces if you're American. Um, so I find one cup of pasta is usually good for one person. So pour some of that out. That'll do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the medium saucepan I think is going to do us all right. So let's have two cups of that because I'm making for two people. This will go further if you add more to it or serve it with some salad or a side or something like that. Right, that's ready to go. Um, we don't need the pasta anymore. And I shall add a dash of salt. I don't know how to season things. Right, we don't need that. I'm going to get a plate ready for my pepper. And I'm now also going to start up the other hob and get my frying pan on the go. So I do my mince in a frying pan. You could use a wok or something like that, or whatever you fancy, really. And water is nearly there. That's close enough to boil. And I'm going to fill this up until I've covered the top of the pasta with water. Good. So the pasta is just covered up. So now I'll stick the lid on that. And I can hear this coming back up to the boil. So I'm now going to turn my hob down to two on mine. So pretty low heat. And with the lid on there and this being a fairly large hob, that should keep it boiling. If we hear it go to sleep, we need to turn the heat up a little bit more. But we've just got to keep it on the boil. This is going to take like, I don't know, 10 or 12 minutes to boil. And this is now our timer. When the pasta is ready, everything else should be good to go. So on that note, I'm going to check if our pan is ready. Uh, I use one of these spray oil things. This is probably the wrong one, but 
it works. It's not ready. Okay, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Uh, while I wait, I'll cut open the mince. So I shall get a knife, hack this open. That's all set. Ah! All right, if that happens, just put the lid on too slightly. There we go. Uh, we'll need the cooker hood in a minute. I've realised I'm going to have to turn on the noise dampening on my microphone. All right, we should be good to go now. There we go. That's giving a sizzle. That's ready to go. How's this doing? Good. That is on the boil. I'm going to keep an eye on that. And we're now just going to lob the entirety of the mince into the pan, like this. And if it's got any of those weird bits of paper on the bottom, peel that off and chuck it back in the pack. This does not, so that's good to go. All right. Now, because I've opened and handled the mince, I'm going to wash my hands. Just to clarify, I did wash my hands before I started. Right. Flip that over, start doing the other side. And as you can see, I've browned off the top of the mince, then I'm going to brown off the other side, and then we'll break it up and we'll brown everything else off. I should probably just break it up immediately, but I find if you just wait a little bit longer, it breaks up easier. That'll probably do. Ah! Right, and it looks like the mince I've got is reasonably decent because it's not immediately pouring out with water. If you buy really naff quality meat, you'll probably find it's full of water, and by now your entire pan will be full of water. And if that happens, you just want to turn the heat on full tilt and just boil it all off as quickly as you can. That's basically all you can do. Because you want to fry the mince, not boil it. Yeah, there we go. We've started to get some liquid coming out now. Hopefully that's more oil than water. I'm going to turn on my cooker hood now just to keep things under control. Hopefully that's not too annoying in the background. What's my pasta doing? That is starting to go to sleep. I'm going to put the lid down. I'm just going to keep this turning over. So our objective is to get all of the mince until it's brown. And as you can see, that doesn't take very long at all. This is actually a fairly quick dip, uh, meal to prep up. I'll just give the pan a shake now and then just to make it all even. So there's no mountains anywhere. Right, I'm going to sit and leave that for a bit. And I'm going to come back and shake this every now and then. And while this is running, I'm now going to start prepping my, um, uh, my bell pepper. I call it, a, most of the time in the UK, we just call these peppers. Uh, I call it a bell pepper, though, just to differentiate it from the spicy pepper. I don't know if that confuses anyone or not. Right. So, to prepare the bell pepper, uh, let me see if I can zoom you guys in a bit. Behold, a pepper. So what I'm going to do with this guy... I'm going to stab it in the top, and I'm going to cut out the middle. That should do. Just pull that out. And I'm going to chuck the middle bit in the bin, and then we'll cut it open. And I'm going to cut it into quarters. So this pepper is technically optional, and I know I said I'm super lazy, but I think I've got time to add a pepper. This makes it go a lot further, and it just adds a bit more bite to everything. So I'm going to cut out any remaining bits. Get the uh, last couple of seeds out of there. And now I'm going to give the mince a shake. Ah, escapee. I'm 
I'm just trying to basically get anything that's red into the middle. So when we're turning it over and we're turning it around, we're trying to just turn it over and put anything that's not yet cooked into the middle of the pan so it cooks. Back to the pepper action. I'm now going to cut these into eighths. And now I'm just going to cut it into little pieces. So I'm going to take them two at a time and just do this with them. Sizing doesn't matter. If you want it to be fine, you can make it fine. If you want huge chunks of pepper, you can have huge chunks of pepper. You can do it however you like. I just do it like this. And sometimes I miss and there's some bigger bits. And sometimes I just eat some. Home. Imagine being a chef and just going duh, 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 across this. There we go. That is ready to go. And don't forget to have a piece just to remind yourself that it's still pepper. Home. Right, our mince is drying out, so it's all ready. We don't want it to go dry, but there's no water or anything in the bottom. It's all turned brown, so this is ready for the next step. So I'm now going to lob in the sauce. So this, as you can see, is Tesco Chunky Veg Pasta Sauce. Uh, I go for the Chunky Veg because it's got courgettes and stuff like that in it. There's more stuff in it. More is better. More is better. I'm just going to pull the whole lot in there, like that. And I'm going to scrape the bottle out because I want to get my money's worth. This bottle cost, uh, this jar rather, it costs 70 pence. That's about a dollar. So, you know, I want everything that's in there. Just start stirring that in. And then I'm going to lob in all of the pepper. And because I'm extra cheeky, I just put in just a little bit of barbecue sauce. You could get some, you could get some uh, reggae reggae sauce, which is a, um, a jerk barbecue sauce available in the UK, or any kind of sauce you want. You could add something else. If you want some hot sauce, you could put a little bit of hot sauce in there. You could add nothing at all. But what I do is just that. I literally just go, and that's it. And what this does, it just adds a little bit of barbecue smokiness to it, which I really like personally. But also, I love barbecue everything. I, I use barbecue sauce like people use ketchup. Just put it on everything. Because I'm that kind of guy. That's how I roll. I'm hectic. Now I'm just stirring all of that in. And because we added in the sauce, we've now got to bring everything back up to temperature. So again, I'm still got the po I've still got this hob on maximum heat, which is about as much as this hob can manage. But again, you know, if you're on uh, uh, gas or induction or whatever, you probably might want to turn the heat down. So we're now going to leave this, and we're just going to bring it back up to the boil. And as soon as this is back up to the boil and it's bubbling away like crazy, we want to turn it off. While I wait for that, I'm going to check in on the pasta. So I'm going to grab a fork. And I'm going to check in on the pasta and see how that's doing. This is probably about done. So I'm going to stab one. Blow on it because it will be hot. Hmm. Yeah, that's done. So you'll know when your pasta's done because it will have gone soft, but there'll be just a tiny, tiny bit of bite to it. So uh, yeah, that's ready. I'm going to turn that hob off just so it stays hot, but is ready. Uh, this has started bubbling. I'm going to stir it all in again. It's almost ready, everyone. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. I hope this has come out. I literally only have one shot at this video because it is Thursday. April Fool's is tomorrow. I should have done this like on Monday or Tuesday so I would get a second swing at it. Um, right. Let's check it. I'm going to grab a bit of everything from there. So I've got some sauce, I've got some mince, and I've got some pepper, and I'm going to check it. How? Mm. I'd say that's good to go. Um, the pepper, 
possibly needs a little bit longer. Let me just try a bit of pepper on its own. You want the pepper to be crunchy, that's the point of it. Um, however, also, I don't want the pepper to be uh, lukewarm or cold, just because it's not cooked. Still kind of warm. We'll leave that going. All the time it's there, it's all getting hotter. So, while that does its thing, I'm going to wash out this jar, and then I can just immediately put it in the recycling. And while I'm at it, I'll quickly wash this plate as well. And then we've, as you can see, we've made very, very little washing up out of all of this. Keep stirring this just to make sure nothing sticks or anything like that. Right, everything is done. I'm turning off all the hobs. And now, just before I serve this up, I'm going to preheat uh, a plate. Now, I am serving for two. However, uh, my partner is not yet home. She won't be home for probably another half an hour or so, actually. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm only going to plate up for one for now. And if we put this all on a plate that I've just taken out the cupboard, it's going to go cold instantly. So what I do is I lob a plate in the microwave for uh, 30 seconds. No, a minute. One minute or so. Um, you can give it like a minute and a half if you're putting two plates in there. But I just quickly microwave that plate for a minute and it will come out uh, reasonably warm. Not turbo hot, but warm enough that it's not going to immediately kill all your food. And while that's doing, let's drain this pasta. So I'm going to hold this over the, over the sink, put the lid at an angle, and just pour it all out. And you can sieve your pasta and rinse it or something if you like. I don't bother. There we go. That'll do. One plate, and I'm going to pour out half the pasta, that's about half I think, and put it on the plate and make a little divot in the middle. Now I'm going to even this out and then just draw a line across it with my wooden spoon so I can see roughly what half and half is. And just scoop half of it out, like so. Doing that by eye. That should do. And I'm just going to gather the rest of it all together so it just stays warm. Right, it's time for the beauty shots, everyone. Here we go. Behold. Pasta bolognese. But it's not really bolognese because that's supposed to be mostly liquid. But I, I like it. It tastes pretty good. Let's give it a taste test. I'm going to try and eat a little bit of it without spilling it all over the floor. Uh, uh, uh. Hmm. That's spot on. Hmm. Now the rest of this. If I was cooking for one, what I would do now is I would get a small pot, like this little chap, um, one that you've got a lid for, um, put the whole lot into a saucepan, put the lid on, leave it on the back of the cooker until it's gone cold, and once it's gone cold, you put it in the fridge. And then tomorrow, you get it out of the fridge, and what I do for reheating is I add just a splash of water, not much, just a little bit, um, put it on the hob, and uh, set the heat to about half. You're not trying to, you don't want to boil it, you've just got to reheat it. And when you're reheating, you need to go slow. If you boil, then you will just burn everything at the bottom. So you've got to reheat it reasonably slowly and just very gently bring it up, just stirring it every minute or so. And again, by adding that little bit of water in there, that should keep it all nice and sauce and moving and all the rest of it. And you should end up with this again, just reheated. Um, and you want to keep going, and you want to keep stirring, keep going, and then when it's piping hot, and that means you get a spoon, you get a fork, you try a little bit of it, 
and if it doesn't burn your tongue, it's not hot enough. I have had food poisoning by reheating mince before, because I did not cook it, I cooked it until it was warm, and I was like, oh, that'll do. Never again. You wait until it burns your tongue, then it's hot enough. Um, so yeah, um, that's reheating. Uh, pasta, uh, I don't think you can reheat pasta, not sure. Someone else can correct me on that one. Um, what I'm actually going to do for now is I'm going to lob everything in with the pasta to keep it all moist and warm. And this will probably be good enough because my partner will be home within the next uh, 20 minutes, I would imagine. So I can probably just keep all of this on the hob, keep it warm, and it'll be ready to just th throw on a plate when she walks through the door. I'm going to chuck that all in there, mix it all together, and then stick the lid on it. Right, I hope you guys found this mildly amusing or interesting, depending on what level of cooking skills you're at. Uh, past that, thank you very much for watching. Happy April Fool's Day and all of that. I'll see you guys in the next video. And past that, get out of my house. <laughs> no. Oh boy. I've got one take at this. Ugh. Uh, which I think the French call a la dent. But that's roughly when you'll know it'll be done.